County from Seattle City Lights right of way along Bridal Trail State Park in Kirkland. This is the September issue of NTV. I'm Sharon Bennett, and this little Appaloosa here is named Pondy. I'm Ed Marshall, and I'm from Kirkland. I'm City Lights marketer, and I used to spend a lot of time on quarter horses just like Lupin here. The reason we're here today is because Sharon likes to ride. And also, City Light maintains this right-of-way that runs from the Skagit down to Bothell substation and then on down the line to the substation owned by BTA at Maple Valley. Right, Ed. City Light shares this right-of-way with recreational users and others like the riders and hikers who use these trails. And City Light has made some significant changes in handling the environment over the last few years, doing less cutting and allowing more vegetation of the right kind to grow here. Scotch broom actually crowds out small alders and weeds that could interfere with power line clearance. It needs less trimming and maintenance. Through here, it gets a good trim about every three years. Ray Stewart, a vegetation management based at South Service Center, patrols the right of ways from Bothell to Maple Valley Tuck Willa to Cedar Falls. It's his job to make sure the 150-foot wide right-of-way is safe for transmission of electricity and is accessible to our crews. The big thing with us, there's more people using the right-of-way, there's more people building in and on and around the right-of-way, and uh, we don't want to lose any more of our right-of-way, which we will if this continues to happen. And, uh, we make uh, bicycle trails, uh, horse trails. They're even uh, talking of doggy runs and things like that right now. And what happens, I don't know. There's less cutting along the trail here and no use of pesticides on any city light right of ways. In fact, these days we're using fewer toxic chemicals on any city light property. And that improves worker safety and helps with environmental concerns. And now City Light has some new tools in the war on bugs. Things were buzzing this summer at the North Service Center when vegetation management crews decided to fight bugs with bugs. This aphid looks small now, but he'll grow up to be a big problem. Every summer, these pests drop a gummy substance called honeydew on cars parked here. In the past, they were controlled with pesticides but this year, aphid-hungry lacewings are the weapon of choice. It's a process of deciding if a problem is so severe it needs to be addressed and then trying to find a, the least toxic or the less toxic method of controlling the problem within certain parameters of how much time and energy and money that that uh, control costs. So it's just kind of trying to address a problem find out how expensive it is, how toxic any particular choice is, and to make decisions. Ray Stewart and Herb Goldman place lacewing eggs and larvae throughout the oak tree branches. When these larvae become adults, the food supply at these feeding stations should make them breed in record numbers and continue their aphid fighting efforts. By using fewer and less toxic pesticides, we allow more weeds to grow on lawns like this at Skagit around our substations and at service centers. Less interference in the environment makes these trails healthier for people and animals alike. Riders, joggers, and hikers really enjoy using these trails. Although there are 500 acres of trails in the park, the area under the power lines are used heavily by riders on horseback. It's one of the few places you can gallop a horse down an open trail in the middle of a suburban city. The park and trail are used year-round for recreational purposes and will be accessible for years to come. And to be able to come out and gallop underneath a power line that is really well maintained and has nice vegetation as well is, um, I think, quite remarkable. The forest itself is also um, gives you a sense of being out in the country when you're really in the middle of uh, the suburban area. And I think that it is wonderful that we've been able to secure this in perpetuity for not only uh, the horses, but for people who like to come out and, and walk through um, lovely vegetated forest areas. While the park is in a peaceful setting, there's some activity taking place downtown 
that's making news. In this building, an administrative law judge is hearing an appeal of a workers' compensation claim filed on behalf of former City Light employee Robert Pilisuk, who died of leukemia in 1989. This appeal is about whether or not the State Department of Labor and Industries was correct in, in already twice rejecting a workers' comp claim that Mr. Pilosek's leukemia was caused by exposure to EMF at City Light. And we, we think that the, uh, the decisions by L&I will be affirmed in this appeal. The basis of that is that there have been more than 21 comprehensive reviews of all of the available science on EMF by scientific panels, uh, including people as prestigious as Sir Richard Dahl, who was knighted uh, for discovering the link between cigarette smoking and cancer. Uh, Sir Richard Dahl uh, just completed a three-year study for the National Radiological Protection Board and concluded that the evidence is far too weak to justify a conclusion that EMF causes adverse health effects. As responsible scientists, reviewers point out that there are unanswered questions that require further research. City Light continues to keep employees and the public informed of new developments. Earlier this year, employees attended a session with top EMF researcher Dr. John Peters regarding studies on worker exposure to EMF. And City Light hosted our second media briefing on EMF this summer, relaying the latest information about the effects of these invisible fields. City Light has been in the forefront of utilities in dealing with EMF issues. We're tracking the science very closely. We're participating in and promoting good research. For example, uh, we, were, we lobbied very hard for the new national research program, which will spend $65 million in the next five years trying to find answers on this issue, and we will contribute to that as well. We're keeping our customers informed. We're studying and measuring our own system to look at field levels there. Uh, we're also routinely looking at low-cost options to reduce field levels in new projects. And through the EMF work group, we have formed a committee to look at ways to, uh, ways to reduce EMF exposure in the workplace. Um, finally, of course, we're keeping our employees informed. And we do this uh, through uh, briefings by renowned scientists in the field, through uh, all employee newsletters and memos when important information uh, becomes available. We're also have an EMF library. We, we do uh, safety meeting briefings periodically. And we have a phone number that employees can call if they'd like to get individual questions answered. And we also do measurements uh, at the workplace on, on request. And I really hope that employees take advantage of these opportunities to find out more about EMF. Since the City Light right away travels through private property easements, it travels through cities and travels through rural areas, and in this case, even through a state park, that's a very diversified mixture of uses. And at City Light, we recently shared our commitment to workplace diversity by hosting a diversity roundtable workshop with other organizations. Representatives from Microsoft, U.S. West, Nordstrom, the FAA, and others joined City Light's We 2000 task force to share workplace diversity strategies. The roundtables will continue to share ideas as their diversity programs continue. Gathering input from others is something we're doing more of in the hiring processes at City Light. Our new wholesale deputy superintendent, Ted Coates, was chosen by a panel of employees, most of whom now report to him. Changes in the wholesale branch include renaming the operations division, power, systems, construction, and maintenance, and locating the boundary in Lucky Peak projects in the power management division. The power lines that go through this park are very important to our power management system. And here in the park, you can really see the devastation that took place in last January 20th storm. Although things are quiet at the moment, City Light stands ready to enter storm season again all too soon. We're gearing up to respond to storms and outages with outstanding City Light customer service. And this year, we're providing faster and more complete information about outages with our power outage hotline. The number is 625-4448. It announces any outages we're aware of and customers can stay on the line to report others. We've also just revised our brochure called What to Do When the Power Goes Out. If you'd like a copy, call 684-3112. 
I hear there's a public service announcement appearing on local television that helps customers deal with outage preparedness and it won a national award. That's right, Ed. The City Hall Digest, rewarding innovations in city government, presented our spot with its grand award for video. Well, let's see it. I'm Sharon Bennett for Seattle City Light. And if your power should suddenly go out, there are a few things we'd like you to investigate before calling us to report it. We're not already on the case. We could use a few facts. Are the other houses on the block also out? Did you see or hear any tree limbs fall? Are there any power lines down? With your helpful customer detective work, we're able to crack these winter outage cases a lot more efficiently. Thanks. Congratulations on that award, Sharon. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes in making a video. You've been doing NPV just about a year now, haven't you? Right, Ed, we have. And although it's very rewarding bringing stories about the utility to everybody at City Light, it's often challenging to get all the information together and produce NPV each month. Tony Hopkins is videographer for NTV. He directs the action as we film NTV on location, and he's the primary camera person. Vivian Dominguez, in video's upward mobility position, assists, along with David Shannon and Kathy Drummond, also on the video crew. We all do a little of everything, so teamwork is essential when we're out on a shoot. Sharon, you seem to always locate NTV in interesting locations, and it's been a lot of fun for an old cowboy like me. Well, thanks, Ed. We are always looking for interesting locations to do NTV, and as we go into our second year of production, we're especially looking for some indoor locations to get us through the winter months. So we're having a little contest. We'd like to see what City Light employees can come up with in terms of NTV shoots. And here are the requirements. It must be visual, it must be accessible, and it must have something to do with City Light. Send your ideas on NTV location to room 809 City Light building. If we use your location, you'll come out with us for that month's shoot, and we'll let City Lighters know we used your idea for that month's NTV. And speaking of picturesque locations, I understand there's a big project going on along the shore and underneath the ship canal. Construction is underway to put in expanded electric service from canal substation to the West Point treatment plant. Two 100-foot deep shafts lead to a tunnel where a micro-tunneling machine is working its way under Salmon Bay to make room for 14 new ducts to carry underground electrical cables. The mole is laser guided, and it's the first time this type of process has been used in the Seattle area. Our families, especially our children, often wonder just what we do all day at City Light. And recently, they had a chance to find out at Family Day. The theme was Bring Out the Kid in You. Several hundred visitors learn more about what we do at work, downtown, at the service centers, and at Skagit. A team of 22 employees planned and organized the day, and many more helped staff each of the activities. That's always a fun event, Sharon. Right, I bet there's a whole bunch of kids who can't wait to do it again next year. So is it time to head them up and move them out? I guess so. That's Wrangler talk, for we've come to the end of another issue of NTV. Don't forget, send us your story ideas to 684-3112. And don't forget to send in your location suggestions. So, from the City Light right away in Kirkland, this is Ed Marshall. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. Lisa down the power line. Let's go.